Welcome to the Hard Water Fishing Show. Jeff and Jason talk tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. All right, welcome back to the Hardwater Fishing Show, Season 4, Episode 7. Our topic tonight is our first time out fishing. So we're both going to talk about that. It is the third week of December, just here before Christmas, 2020. And boy, are we ready to say goodbye to 2020. Oh, for sure. I know this will be our last one of the year, Jay, because our next one will come out 2021. I think so, yeah. Unless we get really bored, but I don't think that's going to happen based on what I got scheduled. <laughs> no, that's true. Uh, you will get out before the new year, though, Jay. I'm hoping to. Yeah. To get out fishing? Yes. Am I going to get out fishing before Ooh, the new year? It's actually not before the new year, is it? I And I, I'll, I'll save that till later, but um, probably even another show, but um, a little teaser there. I might get out Sunday? Okay. Maybe. We'll see. I'm I'm kind of regressing a little bit. Saturday, I'm going to go chase some birds around. But You know, they call that spending too much time on other sports, Jason. I know. I know. But it's a family thing. <laughs> okay. Well, you can allow it. All right. So, yeah. So, we both got out on the ice this past weekend. Um, it was two weekends in a row for me. But, but Jay, for you, it was... Can, can I can I say... I, I've got an issue. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm thirsty. <gasps> Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah, I'm a little thirsty. Ooh, you're parched? A little bit. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. So what are you going to do about that? Oh, good. Well, so I happen to have, I uh, I still haven't gotten through this six-pack of Shiner holiday cheer beer yet, but I'm, work, I'm working through it. So this is a repeat, but it's Shiner seasonal holiday cheer. So last uh, time you had that, oh, go ahead first. I did, yeah. Here, we'll open it though, and you can keep talking because I'm thirsty. Okay, now, say whatever you got to say. I would say that must be a pretty good beer because you said it was good last time you had it and you have a six-pack and it's two weeks later and you still have it. It's not as good as Coors Light. <laughs> <laughs> but it was better than the carpet beer I've been drinking. So okay. it's still an improvement. If I can't drink old-style Coors Light or something of the similar, similar quality. So tonight, Jay, I have a Shell's Cream Ale. So this is from Minnesota, August Shell Brewing in New Ulm, Minnesota. And it's a cream ale. So I've had the Castle Cream Ale. Um, this is a little lighter than that. Um, it says, our cream ale is lighter bodied with a subtle creaminess, leaving you with that smooth finish many of our other beers have. Every sip is mild and refreshing, yet full of flavor, just the way a cream ale should be. Yeah, it was a pretty good, pretty good start to that. So, so this is pretty good. It's like a lighter beer with that's creamy. It's it's really tasty. I would highly recommend it. It does not take like carpet. It's not I hoppy. Just, I just struggle with even creamy beer. I don't know, but it's probably better than carpet beer. I predict because you're not a hoppy person. I predict I'm you. not a hoppy person. I can say that with authority. <laughs> I, I think you would like this. This is an ale. Okay, you would like it. All right, so, uh, you know, we were both out the first time, and we also have a special guest, Oli, gives us a report from Red Lake. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. They had a nice time up there as well. Um, and I was out in Mille Lacs, and also a unnamed lake in northern Minnesota with Northwoods Dave. And, Jay, where were you out fishing? Uh, so I just went to a little lake up here in northeast Iowa in, in a county park. Um, kind of struggled finding some ice so and i yeah. you know so but we'll get into that right we're just yeah. we're not quite there yet right no, we have other things to talk about i, I was going de- i was so excited about fishing you I just, are you just, just keep tracks. like you keep going off script not that we really have we kind of have a script but <laughs> kind of i mean we can we can go there now we could do things out of order i mean no we better stick know. to show business it's your favorite part jason show business jazz hands patron you know great not patron a great way to show support for the show. We have a few patrons now, so thank you for sh- supporting the show. It really helps um, 
pay some of the costs that we have to for hosting and and recording and that kind of stuff. Um, we are available, newly available, on iHeartRadio and Pandora. So you can catch us on those, along with pretty much any other place out there. Um, we have some Hardwire Show merch. You can find us out there. Some gear, you know, sweatshirts. I got my socks and mug in the mail this week, Jay. How are those socks? They're okay. I haven't worn them yet, but they have our logo on them and they're socks. They're like cotton or are they wool or what are they? Uh, they're kind of dressier looking. So they're okay. they're like they're a, for a work wearing sock then. Yeah, they're not for wearing out in the ice shack. They're more for wearing like maybe Crocs with socks inside of your ice shack, but not for wearing like in your boots probably. Okay. You can see us on Instagram and Facebook are our two most active places. We have our website hardwatershow.com. Uh, we have our YouTube page that I posted a cool video about some underwater trout. Jay, did you see that yet? I did. That was pretty neat. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He's been there to the YouTube channel. No longer can you say. No, he's you had there. it on our. I haven't been to our. I, I clicked off the other guy's link, not your link. Oh. Oh. Well, it's our link. It's on our page. So <laughs> you've been there now. You can't say you can't have been there anymore. But I put video to trout swimming underwater and country. you caught me yeah. i ended up on youtube yeah it happened it, it wasn't um just uh matt's off-road recovery this time i know that's my favorite youtube channel right now is matt's off-road recovery in fact i gotta check back in with those guys he was doing a build on an off-road car it's crazy town Oh, yeah, I saw that, too, and I don't know. I, you got me addicted to Matt's off-road recovery, too. So. <laughs> now, we're going, now we're going down a whole other road. But uh -huh. you know, there's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's skills there. I mean, your ice shack could get stuck out there. You could use some one it of those ropes or something. Anyways. The Yankum rope. I, those ropes are, are, I mean, I'm telling you, it. and this is a gear thing, so we can kind of work this in a little yeah. bit, right? So, like, Matt's off-road recovery rope, if you're looking for a rope, to have in your truck to pull people out of snow banks and ditches that's the rope to have i'll give him an unabashed plug because that thing is awesome i've watched him use his little jeep to pull out a super duty buried up to the boards and sand with it nothing broke so you could use that off-road recovery rope to hook it to your your wheelhouse if it's ever stuck and yank it around no problem. you could yeah yeah i Having used those yellow straps to break a lot of stuff over the years, it's pretty cool what that yank them. It's kind of a, for people that don't know what I'm talking about, what he has is this rope that is, um, it's some sort of synthetic rope. So, but it has an elasticity to it, so it stores energy. So, you you know, you kind of size it up and then you hit it and it's not a solid hit and it kind of just goes and goes and goes and goes. And then when it hits max stretch, then it just pulls the other end of it and pulls whatever's stuck out. So, now that we went down that rabbit hole that was awesome, uh, you can visit our YouTube page also. And you can also email us at hardwatershow at gmail.com. And that's kind of uh, show notes or show business. Yep. Um, so, Jay, we, we have a pretty thin... Hey, oh, can, I, can I say something about that? Yeah. So, I, I love when people send us pictures of things. I, I think it's great. I love to, love to see if you're fishing please just fishing yes um and so i and i like to share that stuff out on our instagram and stuff for you what i would ask though is if you can email them to us at hardwatershow at gmail.com that's actually seems to be the easiest way for me to get them up on instagram um for some reason like the ones we get on facebook like facebook messenger are like almost impossible to get off of there it, it's stupidly hard to do that so um, to take them from there and then move them over to a, a post is, is difficult. I don't know why it is. Do you know, Jeff? I don't You're know. You're a computer guy. How come, it's, how come it's so? I'm a computer guy, but you are the chief executive of our social media, so you should know this. I thought I just read it. I'm supposed to do something with it? <laughs> I, I don't know, yes. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Uh, so we have a little bit of reader news, very little. Um, we got a few pictures from uh, Nevada Dave. Um, some for some first ISJ, right? Yes, we did, and he's from well Nevada, hence the name Nevada Dave. And he sent us some pictures of what do we got here? Ooh, trout and perch 
Yeah, he's got a whole double sink full of trout and perch. So that's pretty cool. Some good eating in there. And I'll maybe put some of these. He's got a little dog hanging out with him fishing. People go fishing with their dogs. That's just a, I don't know, mine would eat this stuff. <laughs> well, you got to watch those tender bits getting frozen to the ice. Well, that was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a story. We told that story already. I know, but it came up with the dogs and the ice. So Yeah, dogs, ice, tender right. parts. So yeah. I'm sh- sure our next show will probably ask for some more uh, reader input or listener input. But for today, I think we'll uh, we'll make a really smaller reader news or current events. Why do I call it reader news? They're listeners. Weird. Yeah, we've always... Why have you called that reader news? It doesn't make any sense. No. After know. all these years. That's weird. I'm starting to question a lot of things. <laughs> all right. Uh, so we have a fairly robust gear section here, Jay. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about Tyler L. emailed us about Deeper. What did he say? Yeah, we mentioned this on a couple of shows ago. We got an email from Tyler and he got this deeper sonar thing, and it's kind of a, a little deal you put in the hole, right? And it connects to your cell phone. And uh, we had, weren't real familiar with it, and he ended up having it and bought it, I guess. And he says it works great. Only downfall, full, downfall for hole hopping is you have to have your phone out for the screen. But in the house, he likes it. It's great. There's no wires in the way, and you get a full sonar side by side and with a flasher. So he, he really likes it. So... Um, maybe a good a permanent permanent check set up like if you just put one in a hole and put a screen up top or something maybe yeah and you could just maybe chuck it into the next hole you kind of throw yeah. it around a little bit it wouldn't be maybe as um you know you easier to pick up you know the one advantage of it other than your phone falling down a hole is um it's hard to lose down the hole because it floats yeah that's good it looks like they're like i don't know there's a couple of different kinds anywhere from 300 bucks to 180 bucks hmm so they're not super expensive. One eighty kind of seems cool pretty reasonable. Thing. Yeah, it is. Yeah, kind of a cool little deal. All right. So, everybody's always trying to reinvent the mousetrap, aren't they? So Jay, you also in your this weekend you had your new um, drill bit that's called the pistol bit, right? Yeah. So I had a, a the pistol bit auger I'd picked up, and so I. Uh, took that out fishing this weekend and I was going to try to save some money and you know that usually turns out for me so as most of my good gear failures go I starts off with an eBay thing not the pistol bit but I bought a couple of remanufactured batteries for an old DeWalt hammer drill I'd laying around and I thought well, let me see let me see if I can make this combo work in early ice so I was able to drill with two batteries and that old DeWalt hammer drill. It was an 18-volt XRP uh, brushed drill, not brushless. I was able to get nine holes, ten holes, in three inches-ish of ice. <laughs> and that was all she wrote. <laughs> so the answer to that question is no, the old 18-volt non our brushed drill is not adequate for running an eight inch pistol bit Eskimo auger. <laughs> so I've answered the clinical question. But really it's just research and, and sometimes, Jay, when you fail, you actually learn things, right? And in this case you did. I learned I need to buy a new drill. <laughs> which isn't in the it's not gonna happen this year. So the Eskimo is gonna get attached to my propane power head and do service that way. Just cut a few pounds. Sounds awesome. Well, we'll have to hear how that works and how that connects. And Yeah. It's always an adventure. And you also had your camera out for the first time, right? I did. I used uh, the camera I had acquired, um, and I dropped it down the hole and promptly had a northern looking at me. Cool. I looked at him, he looked at me, and he swam away. Cool. Um, I was not able to get him to bite, but I think I might have hit him on the head with a camera. I'm not sure. <laughs> he seemed very unimpressed by the whole thing. <laughs> Kind of gave me the stink eye and swam away. Um, it was pretty good clarity for the uh, the water was a little murky, a little green, but um, definitely was able to use that. I think what I learned is if I'm going to use it again, I definitely need a panner. Mm. Um, without a panner, it's it's um, I don't know. It was kind of a hassle to try to try to arrange. So definitely yeah. going to get a panner for it, and then I'll report back. Well, I think you should get one right away. <laughs> Well, Jeff, I don't, you know, I have a maybe a little stricter allocation 
procedure in my household. Oh, well, so I allocated a new ice shack. <laughs> so so this is, and it's based off of, I got accused of this because you've given away our secrets, Jay. I, I went to Mille Lacs last weekend and I was trying to recruit one of the children to go with me, right? So my older two teenagers were like, whatever, like I'm going ice fishing, right? That's kind of, we'll just say they're teenagers. But my younger son, he was like, sure, dad, I'd love to get out of the house and go ice fishing up at the ice shack at Mille Lacs, right? Well, Which is awesome. At he, least you're raising one of them, right? Yeah, totally. So I was super excited. It's always good to have a fishing buddy, right? But I had a dilemma. So in the arsenal of ice shacks right now, I have a wheelhouse, which clearly was not going out in the ice this weekend. Um, and I have, I call it the big top. It's like a, it's one the biggest clam hub you can buy. I don't know how big it is, but it's like a octagon shaped giant thing. I don't know what it's called. Escape, ice escape thermal, maybe. I think they changed the names, but it's huge. So I, him and I went fishing that once and it's just too big for two people. And I have a one man, which is clearly not big enough for two people. It's a, you could have had him sit outside or you could have sat outside. Right. Or we could be safe and get a new ice shack. <laughs> it's about safety. It is. So Oli kind of tipped me off to this, but I, cause he had borrowed my big top the weekend before, um, for Red Lake and um, he also fished out of an otter hub and was telling me how nice it was. And, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, so they had a sale um, on the otter, smallest otter, because I wanted something small. It's a two to three man, but it's really a two man. Um, so it's the otter cabin and it's really nice. Um, so it's a hub. So it's nice and light. And, you know, with a nine year old and me out in the ice, uh, we can both pull all of our gear and it out there. And it worked great. So um, it has rod holders built into the sides that work really well. It has nice pockets. Um, you know, it, it, it was great. Um, a little small. Like, I mean, it was small on purpose, right? Isn't that funny? Like, I want the smallest one because I don't want it to be light. But I can't stand up in it, which is so Yeah, so. that's, yeah. So It can but, make for kind of a long day stooping over. But, well, but you sit down, right? Mm -hmm. And the other thing is... Um, because it's small, the door is even smaller and that's hard. Right. And I looked at getting a different one, but I only had a few days to pick it up and they had this one locally and it was very cheap compared. I mean, if you look at a two man flip over, I mean, you get a cheap one for 600 bucks. Right. Um, and this was like two thirty on sale. Yeah, that's pretty pretty reasonable for, for anything these days. Right. And storage, I, I still like hubs. The storage is easy. It's easy to move around. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It pops up nice. Um, you know, it did what it needed to do. It mirror comfy. It honestly sitting in it, it felt kind of like a normal two man flip over because okay. you put two chairs in the back and you fish out the front and and mm -hmm. it's great. So, so yeah, I would recommend oh, very one. Cool. Yeah, and then I also had to buy an ice chisel. This weekend it was required. I did not have. Yeah, one. a little bit. And you know how these things go, like. I'm going up Friday night to go fishing, but you know, I mean, I had to work on Friday and we didn't get out too late, but, but by the time you get up, get going, all the stores are closed, right? I mean, at seven o'clock, you can't buy bait. No. Uh, so I knew this and it's just the way it is. It's just life, right? So we went Saturday morning um, into the bait shop in Garrison by Malax there and got, um, the the one of the two last ice chisels they had at the store because it was pretty popular this weekend um, i can't believe you don't have didn't have one of those already i've never fished early ice like this before not this not this sketch wow that's crazy town i got this ice chisel so it's like a it's metal on the bottom and it's kind of like a local thing you can tell it's not like a it's not a factory brand or a big brand right it was just so it looks like something somebody made, right? Okay. Like they, they, they don't make two of them. They made probably a few hundred of them or, you know, but the bottom is red and it's steel, but then the top looks almost like a wooden baseball bat. Hmm. It's like fused into it. Um, I'll take a picture and put it out there, but it was one of those things where, well, I get this one or this one. It wasn't a choice, right? It's like It was like, mm -hmm. this is what they have. I like yours. It splits in half, but 
this is what they had and you know it was what I used and actually it worked really good so um, you know we, we used it that day and I'm glad I had it because I would not want to be out in that ice this weekend without it did you ever have one uh, a hit where it went through on you this weekend um, not the first time but I did a three and it went through really bam wow. bam through yeah oh yeah um so the i mean i'm sh- i don't know if everybody's seen the reports and stuff but last week on a was pretty they helicoptered people off there was ice moving around um there was a couple rescues and when i say rescues it wasn't like people were dying it was you know they had to get some help to get off the ice right like mm-hmm. it wasn't like they were um they didn't get in the water it's just the ice was moving around and a big crack formed and it went a mile down the down the shore so you maybe had to walk a mile down the shore to get off the ice right so 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 yeah you would you would not want to be out there without a chisel this weekend not at all at least where i was place i was at I actually had more ice maybe than you had in some spots because for the most part i could hit three times before it even went through it would go through sometimes in the fourth sometimes in the fifth where we were fishing was six inches of ice right but there might have been a crack where it was only four. So, you know, I, I, I chipped my way out. Even though there was people out there, there was a lot of people out there. Um, it was not, it was not um, very, it was very in, inconsistent ice. Like it would be you, two, two inches one place. They're not two. I never saw two. But it'd be like four inches and then it'd be six and there'd mm-hmm. be a crack and you know when there's a crack i'd jam on it a little bit make sure it looked good before you walk over it so well and you had your kiddo with you too so there's that extra layer of okay is what i'm doing makes sense yes exactly yep but you know i mean if yeah. i hit three or four times and then you hit water then you know i mean i i would say i did not see anything less than four inches where cool. we were so i feel that felt okay to me as long as mm-hmm. i was really oh yeah check. that's plenty of ice. as long as you're checking it all the time right so yeah so it was it was good very cool. Yeah. It's awesome to be talking about gear and use rather than gear, how we might use it. Yeah, I went, when I went out, I didn't, I kind of went light. I did not bring my ice shack. Um, I only had about three hours, two hours before dark. You know, it was 30, 32, right at 32 degrees. So I just thought, well, in the, in the name of ease, I'm going to just go simple. Yeah. You know, um, just sat on a chair and put my back to the wind and fished for a little bit. I moved around quite a bit because I wasn't finding stuff. But I'd never fished this particular um, lake. And it, it had open water, so I wasn't moving around a ton. Right. Um, other than where I knew I had good ice. So um, I also didn't have a waxies, which I kind of wanted. I ended up with some hmm. minnows. Hmm. But the place I stopped for bait didn't have any waxies yet. So that was weird. Wow. Um, and I was in a hurry, so I didn't poke around. I just grabbed some minnows. And I didn't even plan on using minnows. So I had to put them in a 32-ounce um, <laughs> a, a drink cup. Hey, so that's on, improvising. On the, on the way up, I'm like, okay, because I got a pop in the same exact <laughs> cup. And I'm like, okay, which one? I feel like I've done this bad choice before. Yeah, you don't want to be like brake fluid or <laughs> Diet Mountain Dew. Minnows or Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> I know. So, yeah, it was. I'm like, okay, the one without the straw, that's the minnows. So, Although I, um, I think I would drink minnow water before I'd drink brake fluid. Yeah, probably. Probably. So, Jay, you started talking about your ice fishing adventure for the last weekend. Why don't you uh, give us some details about presentation and location? And yeah, I did. sure. So um, my problem is right now everything around me is not frozen up yet. So um, there's a, a little lake up north of me about an hour, hour and 20 minutes that I went to um, that I know some people had done pretty well in last year. And I thought, well, let me try it early ice this year and see if I can can uh, have any production. It's a it's kind of an impound type lake, but it's it's very it's pretty deep. It's like 25, 26 foot deep in the center of it um and it's not very big it's about 300 250 300 acres um but it's got crappies in it which is kind of what i was after and some northern i thought well that'd be kind of fun too if i could find one of them and so when i got set up um i set up kind of 
I don't know, they're just on one of the steep, kind of at the bottom of one of the first drops, kind of in that transition spot, and um, mark something right away with the fish finder. I thought, well, that's kind of cool. So I put the camera down. The first time using a camera, that was fun. Cool. And uh, right away, I'm like eyeball to eyeball with this northern looking at me. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> and so I pulled the camera back up right away and put down a jig trying to catch the northern, but I, he took off. I don't think he particularly... You know, that camera is... Uh, it's pretty big, yeah. right? Like, the, the camera part is not small. And so, I don't know. I I suppose he didn't particularly care for that. Um, so, I think, you know, when I set that up in the future, I'll try to set it up, you know, like, have one hole that you're going to fish and then one hole off the side that you're you're going to run the camera in i think it definitely wouldn't put it down the same hole for fishing uh, you could really end up with a mess i think um hmm. as far as so i tried a couple of different approaches i started off with uh the frosty spoon and jeff's Ooh, i like the frosty yep. spoon nice and, and nothing nothing there hmm. nothing and um i you know what i have to say is i didn't spend a lot of time switching lures because i spent a lot more time drilling you know i drilled some holes Your nine ten holes. holes my 10 holes but then there was some other holes out there where people have been out previously yep and so i chiseled through those and used those as well so i probably fished 20 different holes in those two hours just trying to find something on the finder you know yeah um, so i i jig and see if something and i just never located them um i had a couple marks towards the end of the evening so I switched up a couple of times um, to some smaller stuff, some bigger stuff. So I went to like a a small, uh, a smaller by, you know, uh, oh, geez, what's the word I'm looking for, Jeff? Like a tung- tungsten uh, jig? I did a tungsten jig, but no, the one I'm, uh, Northland. Uh, oh, a buckshot. Buckshot. Yeah. Thank you. Good Lord. Yeah, to a, bunch, to a couple different size buckshots, just trying to entice something at least into to into the area you know and just i just honestly i didn't i didn't connect hmm. um but you know first time to the lake just kind of going blind wasn't really in the spot i wanted to be because of the ice conditions yeah um but you know what dude i was so happy just to be out on the ice and sat there and kind of watched the sun go down and and there's only one other guy out and he left just before dark i probably left a half hour after sunset because I still had an hour plus drive home, and I'll go back. I'll probably go back up there, but because um, I, I want to give it another try. But it was like I said, it was just just great to be out um, and uh, to take a take a swing at it. Anyway, no, and I, I I'm with you. I think about that sometimes. If um, you know, I only caught one fish on Saturday when we went out, so I mean, we didn't get skunked, which I always think is good. But you know, you don't always have to like have the best fishing time of your life you know from a success perspective to have a good time i enjoy being out there being outside um you know being on the ice it's it's a good time talking to other people at a social distance (laughs) i didn't talk to anybody okay um he was on the other side of the the lake for Mm me by lake it's really more of a you know, by some standards, it's a pond, but it's sure. it's a it's considered a lake, I guess. Depends, I don't know what the definition is, lake to pond. I suppose it depends on perspective at some level, but. But you know, supposedly Minnesota has ten thousand lakes, but I've heard they actually have more than that. But I don't know what makes a lake, right? I'm yeah, sure what's these, the definition of a lake? I'm sure these ponds that everybody ice skates on out here, they're not lakes, but I don't know where it becomes a lake. Well, cool. You got out, and that's the important thing, right, Jay? Yes, sir. So tell me about you. You caught a fish. Yeah. So actually, I have two fishing reports to kind of give. Um, I had really two kind of distinct fishing experiences. So we'll start out. um, So we we didn't have a podcast out for the last week because we've been busy fishing a little bit, right? I mean, it's hard when the fishing gets in the way, but a good thing. So... Uh, I was up with Northwoods Dave. I think you posted a picture of one of the crappies that we caught with Northwoods Dave. I did, yeah. So we caught some really nice crappies, like 14s. They were they were fun. They were nice. Um, so really what we did was we did kind of a what we used to do um, traditionally. So during the day, we went out there, and we don't get up early, right? 
<laughs> I'll say. No, we, you guys are about laziest ice fishermen I've ever seen. Hey, it, it's worth it. So we got up, we got out fishing about noon, right? And we had a few projects to do before then, and we got out fishing about noon. We ran tip ups, and we caught um, some nice northerns. Nothing like giant, right? Um, but the the regs are actually pretty loose right now for northerns there's kind of a thing where they're trying to get rid of some of the smaller northerns so there's a slot on them but the smaller ones you can keep up to 10 of them in some areas of the state which seems like a lot of northerns. that's a lot of snot rockets that's a lot and i thought of you as i was cleaning them jason Ugh. and we didn't keep 10 but but um i am gonna try i have them freezing but i'm gonna try some pickled northern because I, I know i've had it before and it's super good yeah so I'm looking forward to that. We'll talk about that later. I haven't done it yet, um, but I actually got the recipe from your brother. And well, he does make good pickled northern. Yeah, so we're gonna have some pickled northern from uh, brother Matt. You gonna post that recipe for people? Yeah, we should. I think I want to try it first. I guess you've tried it, but yeah, it's been a while. Why don't you see if? Because if you can make it, anybody can make it. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. So uh, a couple of things I learned on with the Northerns. I'm about done with these crook strike predator rigs. Those things get tangled in everything. And true to true Northwoods Dave, what does he have? Because we're both using beaver dam tip ups, right? He has literally a gold hook. Like the, yeah. the hook that you find in the 101 tackle box for your kid or whatever, right? Like, I mean, just the most plain gold hook that you can find. And not even a big one, like something you'd use for walleye fishing. And so I've got this, like, predator quick strike rig with, like, two trebles and spinny things. And, you know, it's fighting me the whole time. And he, of course, true to Northwoods Dave, catches more northerns on his one little golden hook than I can catch on my predator rig. So I actually this weekend switched them out and I got rid of them. So um, Max over at Hardwater Freaks was actually talking about this, I think, on his uh, Facebook page. The, going to the octopus hook. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a little simpler. It doesn't get tangled and stuff. And I, I don't, for Northerns, it didn't see, it seemed like they were hitting the other ones first. Now that could be just randomness. We just had them on the weed line. We had them just a foot off the bottom. We were using sucker minnows and, you know, just running tip-ups um dave was running the he got an early christmas present and had the blue tips right the the ones that tell you on your phone when you get a fish oh yeah which are really sweet and i really want mr anti-technology right but but he knows when it makes sense so so he had mm -hmm. those and i just had my um he had kind of the wood ones the wood tip-ups and okay. i i was using i have two of the um, they have the skull and crossbones, like, uh, they're black and skull and crossbones beaver dam tip ups. Cause beaver dam uh -huh. comes out with all kinds of different little special ones. And so I have two, I don't know, pirate tip ups, <laughs> like if, when the flag goes up with skull and crossbones. Um, so we were just using those and we caught, you know, we had a pretty good success. I mean, we caught some nice Northerns, um, nothing massive. I think Dave did catch like a 28 or 29. Um, that's cool. But but you know, for a northern that's not massive. It's a nice fish, but um but most of them we caught were kind of more snot rocket size and those are the ones we kept for you know, we were tip up fishing in the afternoon or to the afternoon and you know, just had our tip ups out and we were just fishing. And then, you know, about three o'clock or so we moved out to the deep and set up our shacks. Really as soon as we drilled a couple holes, um we were at about eighteen, nineteen feet of water. Uh, we were marking fish pretty much right away, which is always nice. That's awesome. I know. It's always nice. And then once we were marking fish, um, I got them to stare at it, but I couldn't get them to bite. Right? Not so awesome. So I was jigging. I was at a dead stick going with a bobber, and then in the other one I had a uh, buckshot going. Ooh, I'm sorry. Not a buckshot, but those glow spoons. You know those... Uh, Northland glow spoons. It kind of looks like a buckshot spoon, but it has sure. glow sticks in them. And Dave was fishing with a like 16th ounce buckshot, like a small buckshot. And I believe it was like a purpley blue color. I don't know what the exactly the name of it is. So I was, these fish are down there. They're staring at my 
bait. I can see them on my my uh, hummingbird. And Dave comes over with like a 14 inch crappie, shows it to me. So then it was like, oh boy, it's gonna be a good. It's night. on now. Yep, it's a good night. You know. So we both caught a few. Um, I think maybe three or four, five. Um, I ended up switching all my lines out for the perch talker. You know, that has like the little noisemakers at the top and it's a chain. We used them on Devil's Lake and then a, yep. a treble. And I put a, a crappie minnow at the bottom of that and really just kind of dead sticked it. Just let it sit and then they would bite. And the bite was so sensitive. Like I had that noodle rod on. You know, those noodle rods that that nice person mm-hmm. sent to us last year? And even the noodle rod wasn't enough. You had to watch the line go slack. Wow. You know, like you just could see the line kind of go slack, and then you'd hit it, and then it was there. So, and they were some nice crappies. I mean, they weren't all. So they were taking the minnow and going up. Yep, exactly. Yep. So you just had to kind of watch it. It was real finesse, real finesse. Uh, but we caught some nice crappies, and we actually did that for two days. And kind of had the same success both days. But the bite was like 4.30 to 5 o'clock. And that was it. Right? Dang, that's slight. It's like just a little window and they were done. Right? And it was it. So, but it was a good time. We still caught some nice crappies and some nice northerns. And then the next weekend, I was up on Mille Lacs, which was this past weekend. And we were out of the Red Door, where I have my ice shack from so we slept on land and walked out and the ice on Mille Lacs was not super great there was um some breaks in the ice like not like full-on water open but um there was about three or four inches of snow up there and so you can see where the water comes up through the cracks in the ice because there's no snow there and you know you don't go there and so we fished just off of this break, um, that's the, off of the first break out in front of the red door. So we were probably in 13 feet of water. We had lots of lookers again, and there was tons of people out there. Like the pressure was pretty high because, you, like you said, you can't fish where you want to fish. Yeah. You have to fish where you can fish, right? I mean, you can't, unless you're going swimming, you're, you're fishing where the, the ice allows you to fish. Mm-hmm. And so everybody's lined up because it's... 13 feet you'd really um i had marks on my hummingbird from where i fished and caught fish this summer and you know of course we're like 50 yards from there but you can't get there right yeah you can't get there well you could but you need water wings (laughs) yeah let me tell you i might have been surfing for those um either an airboat or a um you've seen those those little machines that have four wheels and it's like an ice shack on top. It looks like a boat. What are they called? The Willcraft. 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 Yes, a Willcraft would have been really useful this weekend. Really useful, because there was plenty of ice out there. You just couldn't get over the crack, right? Yeah. Wow. Noah actually, I was with Noah, and he actually got into a really nice, nice walleye. So he caught about a 19-inch walleye, and that was off of um, a bobber and a red hook. So the fish were really slow. I cut the tails off. And we did literal bobber fishing with just a split shot and a red hook and a fat head and a bobber. That was it. Hmm. And they were just, the fish were really slow. Um, we put a tip up out with a walleye, with a sucker minnow. Nothing touched it. Really? So, and we, we about four o'clock or so, the ice started to make some noise. And it's, you could tell it was starting to move around. So we packed up and left. That was... Yeah. That was... We were on six inches of ice, and it was really solid. But when, you know, 20 yards from where you're at, you can see the ice starting to move and shimmy and shake. It was like time to go in. Well, when you're when you're with a kid, your risk tolerance is different, you know, versus if you're with another guy or gal, adult, another adult where you're each making your own risk decisions. When you're making that decision for the kid and knowing full well that you need to come home with him or your wife would be cranky. Um, you know, you're kind of, you kind of got to go at that point. That's good. I'm glad you did that, that you were safe. I mean, I think 
you know, I am a little disappointed. I think you could have stayed on shore and ran a tip up, you know, and just kind of been careful that way. But um, I understand that sometimes people quit. Sometimes quit. Yeah, I I know that I am way more <laughs> risk averse than maybe some other people in our fishing crew. <laughs> so I don't know. I, I, I can't say I've honestly ever been in a situation where I'm watching open water and the ice is moving. So I don't really know. Uh, my first instinct would probably be to have a wider stance um, <laughs> because yeah. that's usually what I do if there's loud noises. Yeah, and I mean, we were get ready to run. We were like but, very close to shore. We weren't very far out, right? I yeah. Mean, but still, it, it just was. Um, it was a. It was time to go in, and I was glad we did. I mean, lots of other people stayed out later, uh, you know, because there was hundreds of shacks out there along that first break. Wow. I mean. Like, it was almost like you were in rush hour traffic. Like, I had to find a spot, you know, to, like, merge into. That's crazy. <laughs> I mean, Tom. it was pretty busy. Um, I mean, That's everybody was respectful Tom. and nice. It wasn't like we were on top of each other. But sure, everybody wanted to be not where we were. But that's what the lake would give us at that time. So Yeah. So Yeah. Well, I think we're also have a fishing report from Oli, right? We're going to move to that. Yeah, we recorded this separately, um, and he was on Red Lake. Um, it actually would have been two weeks ago and had some experiences yep. that we talked to him about. So we'll go ahead and then into that interview. Yeah, so we've got we've got our buddy Oli on the line, and he's going to give us a Red Lake fishing update that he and 62,000 other Minnesotans went on and fished on last weekend. <laughs> yeah, so, Sean, what would uh, you learn? You know, it, was, it was very busy. Uh, I believe it may be the last weekend where red gets as much pressure um, as it, it has been because a lot of the other lakes are now getting safe to walk out or even ride out. Um, Sunday was way less busy than Saturday, and I think that's pretty much that's becoming norm, but it was also very, very slow. Um, you really couldn't jig. Uh, you had to dead, dead stick everything, tip ups and dead sticks, and as subtle presentation as you could possibly do. So the the ice was what we found was probably seven to eight inches until you got out to center bar or very close to center bar, and it was actually ten inches out there. Um, it actually was thicker further out. The ice hmm. roads were in really good shape, other than, I guess, one of the resorts on Friday was allowing single axle wheelhouses, and uh, two of them went through, and I had heard they actually shut their ice road down entirely by Saturday evening because of all the destruction that some of the weighted checks were doing to their road. Were, were uh, people pulling them out with ATVs or what? UTVs and, and uh, angel anchors, you know, where you drill a hole part way through the ice and then you have those uh, angel anchors that yeah. are kind of like a rock climber tool, right? Yep. And they, they put like a snap strap from that to the hitch of their UTV and then hook their winch up to the, the hitch of the wheelhouse and slowly it, and winch it out. Wow, what That's, a mess. We watched on Facebook Live as we were driving up on Friday. We watched one of them get pulled out that way. The funny part is, so obviously the ice is compromised in that area, but it's a spectacle. So everybody and their brother joins in and drives over there to see. So now you've got that much more weight on the ice uh, by all the onlookers. It's, it's like the rush hour gawk effect. And you're kind of like, no, no, go away. <laughs> the shakes is already bad. But uh, yeah, I saw a video. I saw a video of one of them on YouTube or Facebook yep. or wherever. And you know, the axle oh. went in, but not the whole shack, right? It was just kind of like the wheels broke through. And yeah, that's probably the same one we saw. And I think on the very back end of it, it was maybe two feet down. Yeah. Yep. yep. The other one I heard went half in. Ooh. Ooh, I don't know soggy. if they winched that one out. I'm not <laughs> sure what they did. Yeah. So uh, other than the spectacle, what, how did the fishing go? <laughs> the fishing was, uh, I mean, we, we came home with, uh, with some fish, um, and, uh, we, we had action, but it was, uh, 
it's the first time ever I've seen the lack of an evening twilight bite. Uh, the only time of the day when the bite was strong was the morning bite. So from like 5 a.m. to 7 a.m., the, uh, the bite was a little stronger where you might catch three or four in those two hours. Other than that, it was until probably 9, 9 p.m., you were going to catch a fish every other hour is about it. Hmm. Um, all of our fish were caught on dead sticks and all on single hooks. And two, only two were caught with jigs. Everything else was a plain hook. And we were drop shotting, which turned out to be super effective. Uh, we were setting the drop shot anywhere from eight inches off the bottom to three feet off the bottom. Actually, it turns out three feet off the bottom was definitely the best setup because Kathy, my wife, caught uh, or had more lookers than the, the other three of us combined. Um, and I didn't know at the time that she was set three feet up off the bottom. I was at about a foot. It's just kind of my norm. Um, I had tried to go closer to the bottom, and I had also tried to go as far as seven feet up um, on very, very briefly, just trying anything, right? Because at times it just felt like the Dead Sea, but uh, that was the rig that worked. So we used a number or a size four fire red Yamakatsu hook on a drop shot rig. And uh, that caught all but two fish. What size minnows were you using? We stopped at a place called Trapper's Bait, and they said we have fresher bait and bigger bait than anybody around. They were 10 minutes north of Bemidji, and they aren't lying. They had the best-looking shiners I have seen in 15 years, and their fat heads were the same size as their shiners. They were huge um, and very, very lively. I think throughout the entire weekend, we had one floater. Um, oh. Just super, super bait. Um, so, and we got half the walleyes on shiners and half of them on fatheads. And they were all big. These were like three to three and a half inch minimum. Hmm. So did you primarily use the male minnows or the female minnows? <laughs> well, tried, tried to be uh, not gender uh, specific. <laughs> I don't know what they were, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, know, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> but yeah, so pretty big baits. Um, we tried heads. Uh, they didn't want anything to do with it. It had to be a full metal, and it didn't really matter how big or small. Um, but actually, well, I guess the bigger ones tended were uh, producing bigger because we were out there with, uh, or more fish, because we were out there with another couple, um, and they had their bait, um, which was actually amazing, too. They were on their third week on a bag of minnows that had never even seen an aerator and they were as healthy as can be. I have no idea how they pulled that up. I can't make minnows last three days. They made them last three weeks. These like zombie minnows are like half dead and half alive or something. <laughs> oh, they were, they were super healthy. So, wow. um, but their, their fat heads were more normal. Like what you'd expect, like just a little bigger than a crappy minnow. Um, <laughs> but uh, Kathy and I's bait was definitely getting hit more. Um, they liked the bigger minnow. So they started actually asking for minnows and we had plenty. So yeah, the bigger, bigger bait was better. So question, did you listen to our last podcast prior to your arrival up there on Red Lake? I wish I had, cause I would have cut the tails off. I was just wondering. I'm like, <laughs> we're, we gave, we had some good advice there buried in that podcast that might have Ab really applied to your situation, but you didn't listen. Absolutely. Absolutely. You did. I listened to that and I was like, oh, if I had listened to this three days earlier or whatever it was, um, laying it in the mud, definitely something I would have tried. I don't know 
based on the results we had, it seemed like one to three feet was kind of the zone to be in. Um, laying it on the ground didn't seem to really produce anything. Um, so I know he had said both of those. Um, this weekend, I think cutting the tail would have been key. Laying it in the mud, and I'm not sure that that would have produced any more, but would have been worth a shot. Yeah, it just it just highlights the importance to always listen to Sean, right? I mean, you just never know when we're going to slip in some sort of important nugget of information amidst all the other random conversation we have. It just shows the importance of listening to the podcast. It yeah, that's right. It's- it hi- highlights it. It just highlights it. Yeah. No, yeah. that was definitely, I mean, as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, because they were really shy, you know, and he was saying exactly that. If they're really slow, really shy, now they can't really try and swim away or swim up and away, uh, so they're an easy target. And, yep. man, I think I think that I would bet that would have probably helped us ice uh, a few more fish throughout the weekend because we had a lot of lookers that you just could not get to commit. And like I said, if you even touched your line, um, 90% of the time they were gone, they vanished. Um, so yeah, cutting that tail off, that would have been priceless. You know, I have seen, I saw a kid do that years ago. He caught a really small perch and he put a giant hook through it. This was not in Minnesota because that wouldn't be legal. Um, he was on um, Chiquagamon Bay um, by Ashland, Wisconsin. And he cut the tail off this small perch and he was bobber fishing for big pike. And we actually watched him land like a 38 or a 39 inch pike from up here using wow. a perch wow. with, a, with a cut tail like that. I just never, for whatever reason, Never thought about doing it to my minnows. Awesome. That's a great fishing report, Ole. I appreciate you uh, sharing it with our listeners. So thanks. Yeah. And I guess one thing to add too, with uh, because they, we were using such large baits and we had to use a very small presentation being just a single hook, you got to give the fish a long time to get to get that hook in their mouth. Right. Mm-hmm. So, even though we're split shotting with a split shot, you don't need a bobber, right? Cause you can just strum the line like a guitar, if you like, just by tapping your rod to make your, your lure dance or your, your bait dance. But we were using bobber stops and slip bobbers just because it was a, a visual cue as to how far they had taken it down, which helped us determine when to finally set hook. So it was, really kind of a finesse thing you needed every visual cue you could get to uh be successful because we had a lot of missed uh, a lot of missed hook sets uh just you know that's the nature of the beast when you're using big bait and a small hook now the information i had is that you you miss more than most is that accurate i think uh you had a biased uh uh source (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought that that you that probably was pretty accurate. So, I yeah. <laughs> I certainly appreciate you sharing the fishing report with us, Sean. Yeah, you bet. All right. Well, thanks, Oli, for your uh, your wisdom and sharing your story with us. We always appreciate it. All right, I think we're ready to move into legend, aren't we? Yeah, I think we are. Um, so, Brad P from we think it's Quint. West Ontario sent us a legend in this fall. He did. And so we wanted to run with his legend, and he actually sent us some pictures. So I, I like that there's some pictures verifying the legend that he he gave us. So that I like the, uh, the what do they call it on the Antique Roadshow, the Providence? Ooh, the Providence. Does it have patina too, or just Providence? No, well, it's a northern, so I don't know that it has patina. <laughs> So I will, I'm going to read this. I'll read this, um, this story for you. So my name is Brad from Quint, West Ontario, the infamous Bay of Quint. Gentlemen, he writes, I possibly have a legend for you. Two years ago, my wife paid for a few of my friends to go on a boys weekend ice fishing. Bless her soul. 
Yeah, that sounds suspicious, but that's a whole different story. <laughs> we can ice fishing. My buddy Kyle, who is the epitome of an outdoorsman, this guy out hunts everyone, out fishes everyone every time. This guy is 100% in tune with nature. So they drove to, to Nunya Lake in the highlands of Ontario, six hour drive from his house. Is that like Nunya business? Their, none, none your business. <laughs> they get to their ice hunt. Hut and Kyle is our is all right. I'm gonna drill out some tip up holes for us. Drills a half a dozen holes, sets out his first tip up. Within seconds, bells are ringing. Starts bringing up his tip up line. Next thing they see is a rod, but no fish. But the rod is still moving, so he reels up the rod, only to find a second rod attached <laughs> to it. And we're all thinking, what the hell? Better yet, that rod is still moving, so he reels up the second rod. But by now we're thinking this has to be a giant, and we're all super excited to get this giant fish. And the next thing you know, this little pike comes out of the hole. So to reiterate, tip up goes off. Kyle t- catches not one but two rods down his hole in a small pike, and they sent the p- photo in for proof. And he says, "This is why my friend Kyle will always be a legend to him." Oh my gosh, that That's is legend. Rad. I have never caught a rod. So like the fish had the rod already, and they caught the fish again with two rods and the tip up. Yeah, yeah. So that's the story. It looks like this fish, you know, must have drug a couple rods down a hole, ice fishing rods, oh my gosh. and then yet yeah, still went on. So he's dragging these lines around and still went on to uh, grab a tip up. Wow, it it, it almost is unbelievable. But there's a picture. The there's pictures, right? Yeah, there's pictures here. I got pictures. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I will put that. That will go when when we air this episode. We'll throw those up on uh on facebook and instagram maybe with the legend itself so that that's a great story so i really want to thank brad for sending that in and and almost apologize that it took us till now to get to this legend oh my gosh it, like if but, i had the legend awards like so let's pretend we had the the hard water fishing show legend awards like if there was a ranking or legend of the year i mean this is pretty good it's pretty good it's definitely it's definitely up there it's top 10 definitely up there. top 10 yeah yeah, I don't know yeah. about the man with the eyebrows. If it beats that one, that one's going to be hard to That's beat. That's a tough one to beat. But, That's really. But tough. it might be just below that. It could be. Oh, it could man. be. You know, we're we've been talking about doing this, and I I think one of these times we have to just do a whole show of of ice fishing stories. Oh, I know, I love them. Like just one whole show of legends. So we're, we're we may be working on that. So something to something to think about, and and just to remind our listeners to. Please do type up your favorite ice fishing legend and send it on to us because we're 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 gonna maybe put that together one of these times for sure. Awesome, well, that'd be a good way to end a season. Oh, it would be totally would be. And yeah. So anyway, we'll we'll think about that. But Jeff, I think we may have reached the end of the show, though. Huh? I know it was a great show. The legend we t- we went talked about real ice fishing, all of us, and it's super exciting. And gear, gear. It was a good show. So we really want to to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday and Happy New Year's and all that jazz. So thank you so much for, for listening, and uh, we'll catch you all later. Tight lines. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to the Hard Water Fishing Show with Jeff and Jason. Say goodbye. One of the most unique podcasts on the planet where we talk about tactics, gear, and ice fishing legends. We'll be back soon. Bye-bye. Till then, signing off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.